Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want, and thanks for logging on. Well, the so-called holy trinity of Swiss watchmaking isn't Rolex, Breitling, and Omega. It's Patek Philippe, Vacheron, Constantin, and Audemars Piguet. Now, if you wanted to connect them all, collect them all, you'd probably have to pick one, start building out a collection, before moving on to the other. How do you choose where to start? Well, start with A when working your way from A to Z. Thus, Audemars Piguet, I'm going to offer you several entry points into Audemars Piguet collecting that offer value, future collectability, and at this point, fairly low price of entry. So let me start with the biggest piece of them all, the world's first automatic winding wristwatch tourbillon, ultra thin, a true trailblazer, coming out at a time when most folks were just happy to still have mechanical watchmaking in-house capability in Switzerland. Following the quartz crisis, Audemars Piguet recruited Maurice Grimm, a high-end watchmaker who was working for Omega at the time, and commissioned him to build a tourbillon watch, not just a tourbillon, an ultra-thin automatic winding as a sort of statement piece to recap Audemars Piguet's commitment to mechanical watchmaking in the post-quartz crisis era. And what he came up with was a watch only slightly larger than a postage stamp that introduced the idea of the case-side visible tourbillon to the mass market. And although just a little over 350 pieces were built by the time production ran its course in 1993, this watch holds so many important firsts that anyone looking to start with AP should simply reach straight for this model, strain the budget if necessary, and collect it before prices go crazy. This watch was essentially a combination of case back and tourbillon. You can literally look at the back of the watch and see the jewels of the train. The watch is so slim at about six and a half millimeters thick that if it were a simple ultra thin watch, it would be impressive. As an automatic winding tourbillon, it is mind blowing. The watch is also distinctive. It can't be mistaken for anything else. And among the cognoscenti of high horology, this is the kind of watch that despite its size is recognized from across the room. Moreover, the watch is absolutely unique in its mechanical specification. It used photo etched components for its tourbillon cage, a first in the industry. It combined the automatic winding with the tourbillon in a wristwatch format, the first in the industry. It was the first tourbillon watch to integrate the movement base plate into the case back, again, a first in the industry. Uncommon, special, and not just by the standards of AP, but a true forefather of the entire modern era of the tourbillon, the tourbillon automatique reference 25643 deserves your attention, and below $20,000, there aren't many more accessible points of entry to a true high horology tourbillon, to say nothing of one from a holy trinity brand. Get them while they last. Available in yellow gold and platinum, the value is in the yellow gold. Now, prior to the quartz crisis, AP had actually come out swinging, raging against the dying of the light, with an ultra-thin perpetual calendar in 1978. Now, the quartz crisis hit its peak between about 78 and 82, so it was a period of tumult in the world generally, so for AP to come out with an ultra-thin, automatic, perpetual calendar watch in gold was a bold statement on many levels, and a big risk, but the reference 25548 was nothing more and nothing less than AP's heart and soul invested in a single complication. This is a watch that had a waiting list from day one, even in an era when no one wanted a mechanical watch. This is a watch at 36 millimeters that has so much presence and persona, even on modern oversized wrists, that quite literally anyone can wear it with distinction. And it's a watch that paved the way for the recovery of mechanical watchmaking. Even stuff like the Tourbillon Automatique that came later followed in the footsteps of this one. So why is it a great choice? Because it had a long production run, and in addition to being an historically important piece, they were built from about 78 to about 94, 95. So you have many to choose from, get one in good condition, and you should walk away with an Audemars Piguet ultra-thin perpetual calendar with moon face for less than $10,000. And of course, AP services everything it's ever made. If it doesn't have the tools, if it doesn't have the parts, that's what the vintage restoration shop is for. They can go back and make them. With a watch like this, they'll have both tools and parts until you, I, and all of our progeny are long dead. So while it's collectible, it's also serviceable, and those two don't always go together. Again, 
buy the best one you can afford because it is going to be a watch that collectors revere in the future and there's no reason to settle with so many good examples available on the market. Now, you may feel like I'm taking a step back by transitioning to an annual calendar from a perpetual, but when you combine the annual calendar with the iconic Royal Oak case, bracelet, and bezel, suddenly you have something that might be more interesting even than a perpetual. And the reference 25920, I like it best in steel, is an interesting hybrid of a classical Audemars Royal Oak, which is the company's icon. It's their standard bearer. It's their Submariner. It's their Navitimer. It's their Speedmaster Professional. It's their Nautilus. Take the icon watch from any other company. Look at AP. Their version of that is the Royal Oak. To have it with the unusual annual calendar complication is to have a rare combination. AP did not build many of these. They came out with it shortly after Patek's 1996 debut annual calendar, the first complication of its type, and they stopped building them just after the millennium. So to find one, anyone, is difficult. You'll actually have more opportunities to find the ultra-thin perpetual 2.5 548 then you will find the 25920 AP Royal Oak Annual. But if you find a good one, you've got a do-it-all watch. You've got a sporty watch for casual smart attire as well as any suit you can come up with. Again, rarity is assured. You're going to see more Royal Oak Jumbos than you'll see annual calendars. And I always like to say the calendar is one of the most useful complications. So you'll be able to use this watch every single day. Now moving on to an offshore variant that we don't see too often. As I said, the calendar is the watch you will use every day. But what if you want something bigger and burlier than the Royal Oak 36mm annual calendar? Well, how about a 38-39mm Royal Oak offshore triple calendar? Again, built towards the end of the 90s into the early 2000s, this is one that doesn't pop up too often. With the Jezier LeCoultre triple calendar movement, it has the heart of high horology, but on the outside, it has what might be the most wearable men's version of the Royal Oak Offshore. At about 38, 39 millimeters, trust me, it wears more like a 41, 42. It's got plenty of wrist presence. And well, the standard Royal Oak Offshore is a chronograph that, frankly, I could take or leave. I'm not going to use it too often. The triple calendar speaks to me. I'll use that for writing checks, dating letters, cards to mom, email correspondence, and, again, at 38, 39 millimeters, this is an offshore for the rest of us who can't even manage the 42. A rare watch, a cool watch, a special watch, and a great point of entry to Royal Oak offshore ownership. Like the annual calendar, this is a watch you can pick up below $10,000 on the secondary market. But what if you want a simple automatic Royal Oak? You can't afford a jumbo or you're, you're saving your bullets for something else maybe. And you don't want the complexity of the annual calendar or the asymmetry of its dial. How about a mid-size Royal Oak automatic 14790? And just to make sure you make a statement with that mid-size case, which I got to admit, where it's more like a a 39, a 40, how about the military dial variant? The military dial, which features broad hands and full Arabic numerals, is one of the most stylish and charismatic Royal Oak models of all time. In stainless steel, it looks the part. And with the military dial, it glows like a Panerai Luminor at night. A very cool watch and an uncommon version of the 14790, it's a special Royal Oak that the cognoscenti of the brand really respect. So if you want to get into a Royal Oak at a reasonable price, again, below 10000 substantially below 10000 the military dial 14790 is the way to go. Now, the 14790 had a long production run, so you're going to see everything from rose gold and tantalum to exotic dials with brushed satin finish to the military dial. Go with the military dial. It's the fan favorite, and it's one of my favorites. Finally, I would be remiss not to mention the elephant in the room, the oval-cased millinery, the watch that, until the 4101 variant of 2011 didn't really have a place in the world of AP. It's like the guy who can hit on a Major League Baseball team who doesn't have a position and gets knocked around the outfield and the infield as they try to find his natural fit. The millinery always had potential. From 1995, it came from the same drawing board as the Royal Oak Offshore, Emanuel Geitz Penn, the young 
tour de force designer who was a visionary in his time with unconventional watches in unconventional forms, designed the first generation millinery for a more delicate sensibility, for perhaps a more refined and genteel purpose than the brutishly large 4101. This was a watch that was about 40 millimeters by 37 millimeters, and in its 25822 steel chronograph form, it's going to be one of the most distinctive and accessible points of entry to Audemars Piguet ownership. With a high horology, Frédéric Piguet automatic vertical clutch column wheel chronograph caliber inside, this is a thin watch with the gorgeous oblong case of the millinery, you've got a watch with personality and stance that's not going to overwhelm a smaller wrist like the newer millinaries can with their 47 to 48 millimeter span horizontally. This is a watch that frankly was ahead of its time, probably a decade or more ahead of its time. As it's increasingly recognized today, prices are starting to tick up. If you want a great design with a great movement inside and you want to pay about $6,000 for it, you want to get the Audemars Piguet Millinery Chronograph Reference 25822 in steel. Now, if you took all of these watches together and you combined them, you would have something like a fifty dollars to $65,000 collection of Audemars Piguet. Remember, this year's Ceramic Perpetual Calendar that just came out in 2017 at SIHH retails for $85,000. You could get back enough money for a Swiss vacation and a service of every one of these watches if you were to put together the collection I outlined today instead of going for that ceramic perpetual. Something to consider. I'm Tim. This is Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on.